Today I'm making homemade vanilla and matcha marshmallows. You won't believe how easy it is. I'll show you how. Three packets of gelatin. And this is unflavored gelatin. You can buy in most grocery stores. Pour it into a stand mixer, and you will need a stand mixer for this recipe. I'm sorry if you don't have one. <laughs> it just saves you so much time and effort. And I have a cup of cold water. I'm gonna put half of it in here. Just mix this so all of the gelatin gets absorbed. Let that sit, and while that sits, I'm going to start making the sugar syrup. In a heavy-bottomed, high-sided sauce pot, add the rest of the water, a cup and a half of granulated sugar, three-fourths cup of light corn syrup, and just a little pinch of salt. I also fitted my pot with a candy thermometer, and it's important to have one of these because I want to take it to the softball stage, which is 240, and I wouldn't be able to tell that just with my eyes, so this is very important to have as well. And just be so, so, so careful. This gets insanely hot, and the hardest thing to get off your skin is sugar. While my sugar syrup gets going, I'm gonna make the matcha syrup. So I have a tablespoon of matcha powder, which is a green tea powder, a couple tablespoons of granulated sugar, and then a little water to make the syrup. And you just wanna cook this until it all comes together and forms a smooth paste. Okay. Looks good. So my syrup is almost ready, so I'm gonna start my machine on low to break up the gelatin. And I'm gonna turn this off and very, very carefully remove this. I'm gonna add the syrup slowly into the moving mixer. You wanna start this on slow and slowly raise the speed every couple minutes. This is adding air into the mixture. It'll take about 15 minutes or so. Look at how much it's Tr doubled, tripled in size. It's this shiny, beautiful white color. I'm gonna add some vanilla extract. I'm gonna turn this back on just to incorporate the vanilla. So before I pour this into the pan, I wanna add some powdered sugar. And this prevents, or helps a little bit with the marshmallow sticking. I also lined it with parchment paper that I sprayed on both sides to one stick to the pan and then also for the powdered sugar to stick to it. That's kind of the messy part. You wanna make sure it gets in all of the corners, all over the sides, anywhere the marshmallow is gonna be. And another trick for dealing with this marshmallow, which is very, very, very sticky, is to spray, with cooking spray, a non-stick silicone spatula. All right, and just guide it out into your pan. How pretty does that look? It's so shiny. And I guarantee this tastes better than any store-bought marshmallow you will find. Kind of move it into the corners so it's even. Look at that. I'm gonna eat it again. I'm about to be like so hopped up. <laughs> All right. Now to finish this off, to make them matcha vanilla marshmallows, scoop some of it out, and then I'm gonna make lines. Butter knife and swirl. Don't over swirl it, because then it'll just become a light green mess. So now that it's beautifully swirled, I'm gonna add some more powdered sugar on top. So you wanna let these sit room temperature uncovered for two hours, and then let them sit covered in plastic wrap overnight, and then you'll pop them out and slice them up. It lets them firm up a little bit. If I try to slice them right now, they just ooze everywhere. My marshmallows are ready to cut. And with these handy dandy parchment pieces, I can just easily lift it out. Pretty. I'm gonna cut these into squares. So the easiest way to make sure that they're all even is to go down the middle first and keep a bowl of powdered sugar on hand because this is very sticky and the powdered sugar helps release it. You can cut off the ends. There you go, vanilla and matcha swirl marshmallows. Pretty and delicious.